Hey, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know, this is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday at 9 p.m. Pacific, and they call me Chris of the Northwest. And we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. So while you're listening to your new favorite song for the 18th time today, we'll be caching in the Northwest. I just heard my favorite song. It's the oh. podcast theme song. Although, I don't know if it's just me, but it seemed like it was cutting out. I was going to say, did you really hear it? Because I was no, having, I, I'm hearing it. I heard it in a way I've never heard it before. Oh, interesting. Oh, so, yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Commenting about our audio already. Yeah. Must be the interwebs. We broke them again. Yep. Didn't take long. It happens. Thursday night, 9 p.m. It's time. And tonight, we're talking about the Project Alpha Papa Echo Cache. Hmm. Or the Ape Cache in Brazil. Yes, there's another active ape cache. Live audience, tell us about your visits to Brazil or just about your thoughts on ape caches or whatever you like to talk about. Your thoughts on apes. Yes. <laughs> but of course, first we have to bring in our pair of buffy headed marmosets. Some say they're waterproof up to five feet. And others say they read books from the end to the beginning to avoid surprises. All we know is they're called land monkeys. Yeah, just to be clear, we're water resistant. Ah, There's an important, important difference there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just if anybody was thinking about throwing us in the lake to go get a cache or something. Not so, more than five feet. That's so right. if you weigh the same as a duck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. That's how you tell it for a witch. <laughs> oh. rocks. Yes. Very small rocks. Uh, all right. Hey, well, before we go on to uh, discuss other ways to tell if somebody's a witch, a uh, quick reminder that we appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. A thanks to our corporate Denali level sponsors. First of all, that would be Land Sharks. Landshark shares with us that it has been great seeing so many out-of-town visitors coming to visit their uh, newly award-winning geocache and, of course, visiting the store. Please keep in mind the store is open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., whereas the geocache, well, that's available 24 by 7. So, you know, if you really want the full experience, I suggest 2 in the two morning. morning. Oh, but uh, I love it. Avoid the crowds. The Victoria Police love that kind of stuff. Sure. Anyways, check it all out at Landsharks, L A N D S H A R K Z dot C A. And our other corporate Denali level sponsor, well, that's Gold Country Geotourism. Visit exploregoldcountry.com, learn about the geotour, the regions, download the app, and plan your trip. Well, hey, the snow is starting to melt. It's time to plan your trip to Gold Country. You can do that at two in the morning as well. You could also be doing that at two in the morning. Absolutely. And if you want to know more about supporting this year podcast, please consider going over to the uh, Patreon link, clicking that on the cachingnw.com <sighs> website. Now, I have to ask Mrs. Land Mon Monkey a question. I don't know if she knows this, but what is a glow? Aha, That's a geocaching log of the week. Oh, man. She knew it. Wow. <laughs> what is a glow? You know, we often are asked, well, what hold is Hold on glow? a minute. If we're going to yeah. go glow trivia, Mrs. Land Monkey. No pressure. Who's the grandmother of the glow? The glow mother? The yeah, glow mother. mother. That's what we call it. Who's the glow mother? Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't someone, know. Someone you know well. I didn't think it was Jay, but no. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm one be, mother of a glow, but I'm not the glow. Would mother. it be from Dora Moore? It is. Oh yes. Nailed it. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. All right. Give that monkey a prize. Yeah, you're done for tonight. Good job. Awesome. <laughs> Glad it could be of service. Push your hand in that tiny hole and grab the shiny object. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, we need your glows, and we thank you for sending in glows via email. But you know what? You can tell us glows in many different ways. You could, you know, email. You could send a recording. You can even call into 253-693-TFTC because whether you read it or whether you wrote it, we want to hear it because great logs simply make geocaching better. It's a thing. It's a thing. It is. So let's see, this week's glow, it looks like it came to us from just finding our way. Yes, it did. How he found it. his way. Okay, and the log says, I got a log on one of my caches today that made me laugh. The cacher wrote a log that only makes sense when you understand the cache. The cache is called Exact Change. It's GC Alpha 97 Romeo Zulu, and it's a birdhouse style field puzzle. That requires you to count up all of the change that is embedded into the structure under fiberglass and epoxy. It says it's another one of my uh, caches mounted on a light pole in a church parking lot. Easy to find, but more challenging to open. And if you're watching the live video feed, you can see a picture of the actual geocache container right there. There's coins embedded all around the, the birdhouse type object. So there you go. So... Kingdom servant apparently searched for and found it. He, they wrote, we came here for a change. We wonder at the clerk who handed out a fistful of coins, but not of dollars, plus no receipt. What is the world coming to? But a penny saved is a penny earned. Not sure since it's all quite one-sided, but a numismatist could leap for joy and wreck the cash. We counted our blessings and were not shackled in doing so, naming them one by one and calculated the cost of this escapade. We weren't shortchanged nor disappointed as the register opened to a satisfying ka-ching. Quite a fun time, so we'll spend a favorite here. We took the traveler and left two that we had with us, one of which is unactivated. Thanks for the fun and get a receipt next time. Sign the log. Thanks for the cash. There you go. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. The, where, where was that? Did we did we know where that one was? It's right there on the lamppost. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, no. It's... I don't know, but somebody in the chat, I'm sure, will look it up and let us know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's oh, a... near Phoenix, Arizona. Near Phoenix. Okay. Well, Thanks, Bradley. Just wanted to put on the future finds list. Exactly. There you have it. So, folks, if you want to join into tonight's chat, maybe talk about change in a cache or change on a cache or counting change on a cache or talking about Brazil. Not the movie, not the boys in Brazil. That's totally different. We're talking about caches in Brazil. Use the hashtag Brazil. We thought I thought that would be more appropriate than the hashtag ape, right? You know what? Tonight, just to keep the chap lackey on his toes will allow both Ooh. hashtag ape or hashtag brazil Chaos. And if if things go wrong the chat lackey could go on strike and we'll have to you know how, how do you tell that show without him but <laughs> in other, in any case um uh, make sure you also use the hashtag fatas to talk about something we want to talk about in the after show, right? That could yeah. be an event you're going to, a new cache you found, something exciting, maybe not even cash related. I maybe see folks are already fatassing. Yeah, that's right. So that's awesome. And now, thank you for doing all of that. Use all those hashtags. Keep our chat lackey busy, and we'll get on to the news. The news. Well, here it is springtime that time of year is rolling around again you know we often underestimate our reliance on gps but over the course of 24 years it has fundamentally reshaped our lives in the world we inhabit imagine if you will 
how different our daily routines would be without GPS technology. I'm old enough to remember what it was like, so I don't have to imagine very hard. But among the many things that have changed, paper maps would be necessary. Mm-hmm. Navigate from point A to point B. You can't just plot it in your phone GPS and get turn-by-turn delivery tracking. That's not a, even an option. And, well, geocaching. It never would have come into existence. We'll trace this transformation back to a warm spring day, 2nd of May, 2000. Geocachers have dubbed this Blue Switch Day. Before this date, the selective availability restricted accurate GPS technology to military use only. However, on Blue Switch Day, the U.S. government made a landmark decision and it opened up accurate GPS technology for public use. Some would say this is the best thing to ever come out of the Clinton administration. Jim, Jim, would you say it's a landmark or a waymark decision? Oh, sure. It's a geocaching decision. <laughs> it's a frabjous day. Hello, <laughs> Pele. Nice. Geocaches commemorate this day as a milestone, marking it with pride and celebration. The advent of precise GPS technology brought a new era of possibilities, fostering innovation and exploration worldwide. It's no coincidence that the very next day on May 3rd, 2000, the first geocache was hidden, giving birth to the name of, well, geocaching. HQ has created a souvenir for geocachers to celebrate Blue Switch Day, as they often do. To earn that geocache souvenir, you must find one geocache or attend an event or find an adventure lab location between May 2nd and May 5th. They're being a little generous there. You got four days to do it, but it's coming up just in a couple of weeks. I'm glad they didn't say you have to find nine caches on one work day. I've done something like that before. You Hmm. realize that um, Blue Switch Day this year is on a podcast night. Of course it is. On a Thursday. I'll be feeling blue. (laughs) I still like it as Big Blue Switch Day. I know. I was thinking that as soon as Jim read it, I was thinking, isn't it Big Blue Switch Day? No, 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 that's just, that's an us thing. (laughs) No, that's what it used to be called. Was it? And now it's just Blue Switch Day. Apparently, you know, everything's downsized. You know, it's shrinkflation. It's mm. just blue switch day. I, I I think we should just maintain big blue switch day. And then in a few years, it'll be micro blue switch day. <laughs> Nano blue switch. Yes, exactly. But leave it to the government to come up with something called selective availability. Yes. <laughs> right? How about just not accurate? Yeah. <laughs> have, have, have you ever thought... And... and I hadn't really thought about it. And it's funny because a number of times we've talked about this story and how long we've known about this for, but the fact that the first geocache was hidden the next day. So it's right. not like, oh, yeah. it's not like a year later, somebody went, you know, here's an idea. So it's like the next day, somebody's like, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> like, that's pretty crazy that that was, he, he came up with that idea, like immediately. Mm-hmm. You to access government names are never cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> but typically abbreviated. Well, That's with right. the exception of the, Acronyms. Ministry, the Ministry of Silly Walks. That is very cool. Hmm. Well, tonight we are talking about the Project Ape Cash in Brazil. And I don't know if you were here two weeks ago. Maybe you just listened to the podcast yesterday. Maybe it's on your playlist for tomorrow. Nonetheless, let's give a little recap of how the monkeys ended up in Brazil. When we last joined our intrepid travelers, they were <laughs> on yet another once-in-a-lifetime journey to the south and southern hemisphere, the south half of the world here. Yeah, yeah. So, again, as Chris said, uh, sort of throwing back to the, the last time we had Mrs. Monkey on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Which I um, think we should have her on the podcast every couple of weeks. <laughs> Works for uh, me. I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Um, <laughs> no comment. No, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I noticed Mrs. Land Monkey has been quiet. No, she's not <laughs> yeah. yes, she's definitely in on no. this particular topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's doing that to spare your feelings, Chris. By the way. Yes, I'm, I'm sure she is. 
All right. But yeah, so we talked about our adventure uh, down to Antarctica, which had us um, spending a few days in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, then down to the very south of Argentina to a town called Ushuaia, from which um, we set out across the Drake Passage, spent five days along the Antarctic Peninsula, exploring and having lots of fun. Um, then over to the Falkland Islands, uh, and then back to um, Ushuaia, where we got off the ship and flew our way back to Buenos Aires. And that's kind of kind of where we'll pick up the adventure from. But that's what we talked about in the last podcast. And I was, I, if we were to break this huge adventure into kind of two main chunks, the first chunk would have been the um, Buenos Aires, uh, Ushuaia, Antarctica, Falklands bit. Um, and then the next bit uh, is, um, it, it's, you know, generally it's it's kind of encapsulated as the ape cache. But I think what we want to talk about tonight is like how much more than just the ape cache um, the experience was. Wait, there's more? But wait, there's more. <laughs> now how much would you pay? Operators are standing by. Call now. Poof. Yeah. Okay, so I remember you guys talking about penguins and ice and your adventures changing in the last second and you got amazing warm winter jackets that you get to keep and all that kind of cool stuff. Now that you're frozen through, except, uh, well, laying on your heated bathroom floor to thaw out as something like that. <laughs> uh, how'd you warm up after your chilly adventures in the South Pole? <laughs> well, <we're>, well, uh, <laughs> Laura, where was, where was our next big destination that we went to Laura? We went to Iguazu Falls, which is still, I think, well, I think we still landed on the Argentina side. We started but, there, yeah. But it's, um, that particular area is kind of right where the three right where countries meet. So we did have a, a bit of a day trip. I think, well, we had a few day trips, I guess, but... Um, where we actually uh, went to Paraguay and uh, well, and then of course, Brazil and, and well, Argentina. Argentina, but uh, we did stop at a place called Iguazu Falls. And it, I find it reminds me very much of Niagara, Niagara Falls. Falls. Um, in, in part of the look of it, but also the fact that it's on er, in two countries oh. so like niagara falls where you can visit niagara falls from the u.s side and the mm -hmm. canadian side you can also do the same thing uh, hmm. there and that is what we did we spent one day visiting the park on the argentinian side and then we spent a day visiting it from the brazil side and although you know some of the views I don't want to say they're the same. I mean, the views are spectacular, but very different from each side. I think you can, um, well, I, I think it was worth seeing it from both sides for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, GSM times two asks if there was an earth cache there. Uh, <laughs> several. <laughs> and we found as many as we could uh, yeah. reasonably. I think we got most of them. There was a couple we just couldn't get to. But um, absolutely, there are earth caches and virtuals there. And in fact, what's kind of cool is the virtual on the Brazil side, um, right near the, um, the top step of the falls, we later on the same trip uh, ended up having dinner with the, the CO for that virtual cache, which was pretty hmm. cool. Nice. That was fun. Now, And I then we did the earth cache in Brazil for... Uh, in another area with her, I, I believe it's her husband. Yes. Uh, anyways, so we were, we said, oh, by the way, we're sending answers to you for this and answers to you for this tomorrow. <laughs> well, and what's it's funny, good timing. This morning, uh, I got an email back from, from old Bard, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the Earth Cash owner, um, just, you know, saying. Diego. That he had a great time having dinner and, and meeting up. And so that was kind of cool. Nice. Now, are these two new countries for you? 
Argentina and Brazil? And Paraguay. And Paraguay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they were all new country. Well, we had Argentina technically wasn't at, at that point of the trip. We had been in Argentina mm -hmm. for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's interesting that you compared it to Niagara Falls. And at first I was gonna go, I don't know. I think it was it was quite different, but I I got your point in that it was uh because it's it, it's it's at a convergence of the border of two countries right mm -hmm. at the falls. So you can visit it from either. Um, there's some nice hikes on both sides uh, with a good handful of geocaches to find. Um, what, what about the boat ride, Laura? <laughs> um, okay. So the boat ride you can take on the Brazil side and you can choose to take either the dry boat or the wet boat. And Francis, our guide, kept saying, well, uh, you're going to get wet. And, you know, at times you're thinking, okay, is water just going to splash over the side of the boat? Like, or is it going to be misty? Like, what are we talking about? And I eventually I'm like, so should I take off my socks and shoes? Like, <laughs> and, and he said, yeah, I, I'd take them off. So which was a good thing because I think I had more water dumped on me than what I would have for my regular morning shower. <laughs> so um, they basically drive the boat right under the water is what it <laughs> felt like anyways. But uh, Jay has video of that. I haven't quite seen it yet, but it. <laughs> but you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you watch my latest YouTube video um, about the Pacific Northwest Trolls, my intro clip that I've, I've created a new intro clip. And one of the scenes in the intro clip is that boat ride, uh, is us in that boat ride. So uh, that's one way to get a two second snippet, um, but there, sure. there's more footage coming. But yeah, that was that was pretty, pretty awesome. And yeah, you, you get wet, <laughs> but Considering it was 34 Celsius um, yeah. and plus 100% humidity, um, it felt really good to get wet under the water. And, and, and the virtual that they have there, you're going to get wet on that one too because the the force of the water and the spray and everything that's coming down, even on the bridge deck that you're walking out on, you cannot go out there and not get wet. Mm. Well, at least... <laughs> not when we went anyway yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's an interesting point like on the argentina side you're kind of up above the waterfalls for the trails yeah. and everything you're, mm. you're kind of at the top and you walk out on this really neat path like in that photo chris if you put that photo back up for those who are mm. watching the I, video i can't oh okay well the image that you had if people can <laughs> recall it was a, a a really nice aerial view of iguazu falls um there's this, it looks like it's like a big river delta that kind of all of a sudden drops into a canyon is kind of effectively the best way to describe it. Um, but it's a huge canyon and it's, anyways, it, it's beautiful. But the Argentinian side, the trails kind of skirt along and then go out on some boardwalks out above the falls in that river delta type area where you can see the falls and see them dropping down. The Brazil side, you kind of start at the river and work your way up to to that so when you as laura was saying when you walk out to do the virtual cache on the walkway um so there there you go yeah thank you chris um uh, so it is a horseshoe shaped falls yes like yeah. extreme horseshoe extreme yeah. horseshoe. and yeah. and you definitely can see you know i thought we could see a fair bit of the falls on the argentina side but then we, I found I was quite surprised when we got over to the Brazil side of how much more you could see, and yeah. so and the they top are tiered. The is the Argentina side, and the bottom part of the image is the Brazil side. Like if you split the falls right down the middle, in mm -hmm. that picture, mm -hmm. the, the right so up that long uh, walkway or bridge. That's in Argentina. Is the Argentina okay? That looks like quite a hike out there. It is. And then it looks like in the bowl there of the falls, there's there's no chance you're staying dry. No, <laughs> like <a> <laughs> not at all. Yes. But it was it was awesome. It was amazing. So yeah, Iguazu Falls. Um, and like Laura said, we also had the ability to get uh, um, 
an event in each of three countries in one day because um, not far from the falls is the border uh, between Brazil and um, uh, Paraguay as mm. well. So you've got uh, you know three countries all sort of coming uh, coming together there, which is a lot of fun. Did you ride over in a barrel? <laughs> I, you know, it was tempting. <laughs> Not uh, today. No barrel, no, you don't get to log the earth cache. Sorry. No, that's right. <laughs> Would have been a barrel of monkeys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. It's a monkey chow. Now, um, while you were there, you also went to Brazil and you found the infamous ape cache, which we have to say probably has had a longer run than any of the other ape caches, right? Because the one in Washington was disabled for a period of yeah, time. Yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, but the one in Brazil never changed. No, it hasn't. But, you know, again, reminder, kudos to the the squad that went out and recovered the Washington one. Mike, oh, we definitely. all owe them yeah. a, a, a huge thanks ongoing for recovering that for sure. Um, so the Brazil one, same kind of container. So if you've mm -hmm. found the Washington cache, you can picture the very mm -hmm. large um, uh, ammo can. Um, same kind of container, but this one's a lot more remote. Um, uh, like, like not just the park that it's in, but even once you arrive at the park to get to the cache is a much more challenging trail than um, the walkout to the, the Washington Ape Cache. And it, you know, nothing against the Washington Ape Cache. Beautiful location. Absolutely love going out there. We've been out there many times, mm -hmm. uh, time over time for the uh, the good old Go and Ape event. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll just like so the the park itself. Uh, it's Intervallis Park. It's uh, about five to six hour drive from Sao Paulo, Brazil, inland. Wow. Okay. So, so you you are quite a ways out to get yeah. to the mm -hmm. park there. Um, Laura, did you want to maybe talk about um, so? The morning that we went to the ape and the lookout um about the hikes yeah sure um um I, you know when you're when you think of the jungle i i don't know what i was expecting but honestly i didn't find um the trails any worse than what we had would have typically at home it's just that your trees and bushes are look a little different so um I, I didn't think it was that bad for the main trails. The The park is, well, I thought was very well uh, kept. Um, but it's my understanding for the actual trail for the ape cache that they kind of purposely keep that one not maintained so that people don't go down there so yeah. if if you're hiking the, the regular trail you can't tell that there's a trail that all mm. of a sudden branches off but yeah. you know once you get a little ways in it's like oh yeah you can kind of see a bit of the trail now um we had a large group so um we had split the group into two and there um at one point when the trail i guess a split says we're coming up uh, you can go to the lookout tower in one direction. So half of us went to the lookout and the other half made their way to the ape cache. And the idea was we were to come down afterwards and kind of swap. And But um, the, for going to the ape cache, the first group, of course, people hadn't gone through for a while and uh, Francis had his machete <laughs> And had to, you know, kind of whack at the bushes because I guess people don't, you know, they just don't go that often. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for our experience, we were the second group coming through. And so what ended up happening was we got up to the top faster <laughs> and back mm -hmm. down and hadn't met up with the other group yet and went, hmm. And so then we started down the other trail and we basically caught up with them as they were just getting to the ape cache. <laughs> so we were all there together anyways. But I mean, that was still kind of fun, but I couldn't say 
um, how rough the trail was because I thought when we went through, I thought, oh, this isn't so bad, but I don't know how much he whacked away with the machete before we got there. Sure. Um, sure. But um, that looks like uh, part of the view at the the top. Of, is yeah. that a one of your pictures, Jay, from the... That's one of my pictures. That's the view from the lookout tower that Laura was talking about the yeah. first first like mm. morning we did with the group so that's pretty much what you see kind of 360 every which mm -hmm. way you look around from the top of the tower is just green everywhere um oh <laughs> the monkeys yeah that was probably before the some of the bugs started to come in. although it wasn't that bad up there but um um yeah so but i also thought i guess in my head that hiking out to the ape cache was going to take a very long time and i think we started around what nine nine o'clock and we made it up to the tower and to the ape cache and i think and back for lunch by around noon although i thought at one point they had thought we'd be back around two but we were pretty quick <laughs> and, and i was thinking oh I, I thought it was going to be a, a longer hike and not to say that it mm -hmm. it's not long, but I, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but <laughs> um, loved the park, uh, you know, even to do the rest of the caches that were in the park, I, you know, a, a certain, the trails, like I said, were, were pretty um, kept up. And so I, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was just warm. You can see we're in long sleeves there. I typically mm -hmm. don't wear long sleeves. In fact, I hardly ever wear anything that's long sleeved because I'm always too warm. But um, we were just warned, you know, to, to be careful of, you know, ticks, I think. And oh, yeah. So, uh, so long pants or pants where I had my the bottoms of my pants tucked into my socks and it it was warm i think a lot of us were fighting with um heat rash around mm -hmm. our ankles um but i i don't think the bugs ended up being as bad as uh as we were expecting now it could be worse maybe other times of the year but um i think our guide got most of it when he was bushwhacking for us, but I didn't hear too much from too many other people, at, at least not a lot. And you did <laughs> have you did have an official guide to help you through. Yes, in fact, um, there was. Uh, we had a second one for the one day as well. So um, he took us up to the tower and uh, was going to be swapping, I guess, with the other group afterwards and. Um, I mean, I don't want to say we probably didn't need him to take us up to the tower. It was, you know, it's not like I didn't think we were going to get lost. It was pretty self-explanatory. But yeah, we did have a second one um, just for the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the the tower trail was pretty pretty straightforward. Um, but uh, is it okay to say it? You know, other than what you're looking at, like walk. Um, you know, walking a trail, just like if I say GCD, Chris isn't going to hang up, is he? Uh, the, the show's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very similar to, to the, the trail to GCD was the trail up to the tower. And then there was a couple of caches along that trail and then one right at the base of the tower itself. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, see, a question from Komikino. Um, do we have any Cody, uh, uh, Cody encounters? You know, so so yes, uh, when we were in Iguazu, they were all over the place. Um, yep. They're super cute, but they're like, every, like, there's signs all over the park and, and everybody in the park, including our guide, Francis, I uh, was like, ah, just be careful because they, they can be um, kind of like aggressive raccoons about trying to get yes. you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the when you, if you were to buy something from their snack shop, um, where they have their picnic tables outside, it's actually completely caged in because those things apparently, even if you put something in your pocket and they smell it, they come over and they will tear your pocket right off uh, off of you. So yeah. they are aggressive. Pretty aggressive. 
I, it's funny, Comakino, and and particularly that Comakino asks this question, um, uh, because I'm sure he's familiar with them from the comic book that he uh, co-created. Um, that was my my one regret from this trip is that I did not remember and think ahead to bring my copy of the book with me to get Francis to sign because Francis is also a character in the comic book and his character is uh, a Koti, I believe. So uh, <laughs> that's why he asked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they're all over the place nice. down there for sure. Uh, oddly, we didn't see any in um, Intervallis Park, um, but we did see lots of footprints from tapers. So, mm. yeah. Francis said he was trying to go out and and see if he could spot them because they're either but either out early in the morning or or in the evening. But um, yeah, but it was it was kind of cool to. Uh, it was funny because I had forgotten about it until Francis and I were chatting and we were chatting about different, you know, trips we've done and stuff like that. And we're just sitting down over a beer one night in the park. Uh, and, and it like, it clicked for me, like you're in the comic book. And he's like, yeah. And he said, <laughs> and aren't you? And I went, yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> so there you go. Cole Aquino. you're bringing the world together through your art. There you go. Nice. Awesome. So you talked about the long bus ride or, you know, drive out there. Is that at one point in your journey, you phoned in a message that we played on a prior episode with some listeners of the, of the podcast or along on the journey with you. So shout out to them. I forget their names. I'm sorry. But uh, is that, that was on that trip too, on that. That was on journey the bus out? ride out to the park. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were, uh, I'm pretty sure it was on, it was, it was either on the way to or on the way back from the park. I thought it was on the way to, but yeah. Um, I, 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 I can remember their, their real actual names, uh, Bruce and Jen, but I can't remember their caching names. Uh, um, Henny Penny. Uh, um, toy for, no, toy. It has toy in it. Yes. I think. Yeah. Anyhow, I know. <laughs> wonderful people. Tease toy. To tease toy. That's it. Yes. I, re I remember we talked about them on the podcast that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shout out to them. Great. Thanks for listening. And Yeah, absolutely. And that was fun, right? To be able to you know, a couple of times just record um, just a little bit of audio to send in for you guys. Cool, cool. I love it. So you described a little bit uh, about the park. Um, is it a big destination? Or is it, I mean, now in the geocaching world, it's a big destination, but yeah. what about in the rest of, you know, Brazil? Is it just, oh, it's one of those parks yeah, and, and we have them and it doesn't get much attention? It, it is. It's a state park. Um, so, I mean, you could kind of, you know, like randomly look at a map of Washington and do this with your finger and go, da, that state park. It's kind of what it is. So it's not like it was chosen because it's the most famous state park in Brazil or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is kind of funny because uh, I know even talking with Freilang, who works with a couple of folks from Brazil, and he was asking them about the, the Intervallis State Park. And they were like, uh, you know, Brian can tell the story better than I can. But the, the gist of the story was they're like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so... <laughs> so it would be like, you know, randomly naming one of the mm -hmm. 100 plus state parks in Washington state and, and somebody going, I don't know. I've never been there. I still don't know if you have to, if you have to have reservations to go in there or not, but it's, I mean, it's not clear. like we saw the, the public coming in, you know, like, mm -hmm. like if you wanted to just uh, drive out to one of our parks here for the day or something, it, it's. But you're way out. Like, yeah. you, like Brazil. Well, uh, you know, you can look at a map and go, yeah, Brazil's big, but right. Brazil, the popul it's, it's kind of like British Columbia. Like the population is all along the border. The population of Brazil is all along the waterline. Like oh, yeah. you go six hours mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, there's like the That's occasional big. small town. Um, but yeah, there's not, not a lot of people. And so, um, you know, these parks, 
are, are uh, you know, in the sense of a destination park, like you would have to plan to make your way out there and spend some time. And, and I think uh, on our way out, uh, there's a little town that you get to, I think, shortly after you get off the gravel road. But um, there was a virtual cache there. And we were trying to ask the bus driver if he could get up to this area to stop for the virtual. And they said, no, we can't get the bus up there, but we can stop here, which was clo very close by. So um, we used that kind of as um, our bathroom break and all that kind of stuff, but um, visited the stores. And I think every single time we stopped for most people, it was, we need ice cream. It's too hot. <laughs> but, um, Water. Yeah. Uh, but Francis came back on the bus and he says, oh, he goes, you guys, you're the talk of the town. And uh, <laughs> I think the little boy in the store was just tickled pink because he had never met anybody outside of um, outside of Brazil before. So hmm. uh, one of the guys uh, on our trip always carries um, the little Canadian flag pins. And hmm. so. Um, pinned one on him. He's got a great photo of this kid just grinning from <laughs> ear to ear. But uh, so yeah. that that part was kind of fun too. Yeah. Shout out to Indigo Dave. Uh, yeah. if he happens to be listening to this mm -hmm. podcast um, for uh, um, just making that that little guy's day yeah. like that. That was awesome. Nice. But yeah, um, I think that's one of the other things I wanted to, to talk about the park a little bit. And, and Laura's touched on a few things, but. Um, you know, whenever you hear people talking about going to the Ape Cache, of course, it's the excitement of going to the Ape Cache. And, you know, as we said, it's that is not a maintained trail. So when you get out to Intervallis State Park and, and you're making your way there, but there's also an adventure lab. There's also a geo tour with a variety of cache types in the geo tour. I was going to ask if you hit the geo tour. We, we, did. we did. We got that completed. Um, a, a handful of other caches in the park. Um, so there's plenty of caching to do yeah. in the park, but even aside from geocaching, it is one of the most biodiverse areas in Brazil and mm. just the, it, the, the plant life and the insect life alone yeah. was remarkable. And then, you know, the bird life, we didn't see a lot of reptiles or, or larger animals. They were there. We saw signs they were there, but we didn't see them, but um my goodness like just it's such a, a a beautiful amazing park to to visit and explore and we got to spend how long were we there laura three days four days i don't think four um three days? Yeah, yeah maybe definitely two, three days of, of well, hiking around and exploring things maybe two two full days maybe two full days in we got in not, we not got in, in late or around did well maybe just after dinner time and by then it was already dark there and then i think we had two full days and then we left the following morning at least i think that's how it went but but if you're gonna if you're planning on doing the geo tour which at this point why wouldn't you when you're right. there I would at least plan for two full days, at least. I don't think you could do it all. Well, I don't want to say I don't think you could, but it depends on what your walking level is because some of them are a couple kilometers and they're kind of in different directions. You're kind of almost in the mm. center and you kind of go a little bit this way, a little bit that way. So it could be a very long day if and you tried hot. to do it all in one. And, yeah, and it's hot. <laughs> So yeah, it's but so it'll bring it, a lot of ice cream. Bring a lot of, <laughs> yeah, bring all the ice cream you can carry. Yeah, um, yeah, it's but yeah, it's a, a amazing, beautiful park, and and the geo tour is it's well laid out in the sense yeah. that um, so there's for for the purpose of clarity, in case anybody's wondering, there is no geo coin to earn with that geo tour, at least not anymore. Um, so it's about getting the souvenir. So you do want to find them all. Um, but uh, a number of the caches uh, take you to some really interesting spots Damn. that you might not have mm -hmm. known to go check out in the park if it wasn't for the geo tour bringing you there. Yeah. And, and they did have 
a nice variety for their caches as well. So it's not like every single one is a Tupperware container or that every single one is a smaller ammo can or something that there was variety. Either. Yeah. Nice. So you, you were there for a couple of days. Uh, yes. How were your accommodations? Where did you stay? <laughs> They're kind of like bungalows. Now, would you call it a bungalow? I guess. Um, the interesting thing was that there's one that's kind of close to the lunch, well, kind of, or the food hut that uh, they have. And then they said, well, the other ones are about 500 meters away uh, down the road. <laughs> We're like, okay. Uh, it was more than 500 meters. It was, <laughs> I think, Jay, you calculated it was almost 700. I thought it was like almost a kilometer, but. Um, yeah. It was about 700, 750 yeah. meters to. So, uh, you know, which is fine in the morning, but um, yeah. the, um, the, they give you, the, the beds are very small. Um, Sorry, and, was... and they're either singles or they throw a double in there, but you're all in one room. So when you, well, all in one, when you walk in, if you, hear that the room has two singles and a double well the two singles and a double are all going to be in the same room so it's mm -hmm. not like it's separate it's just one room there's the beds and your bathroom now we had hot showers so that wasn't an issue um but you probably i don't didn't want them though <laughs> no. well, you, you want lukewarm showers first thing in the morning maybe but yeah it doesn't take long before you don't want it that hot but um but there's there's no heat or cooling. So for um, some of the others, like we were on the, um, there's different levels for the rooms. And so we were on the lower level, but some who are on the higher levels were like, oh, it's so hot. And yet again, Francis has been there before and he says, well, he goes, it's interesting because times we've been here, um, you're wearing your jackets to bed because it's cool at, and uh, too yeah. cold at night. So it was very interesting to be on the other spectrum where it was like, no, it was hot. Yeah, we, but, we did understand that there was a heat wave going through it. Yeah. The they were there. Mm -hmm. But there was a pool that they did maintain that was outside the um, the one that's closer to the, the food uh, center, I guess. And so, uh, yeah, we were all in the pool by mid-afternoon. And, <laughs> and some of us were like, I... Well, I know that there was a couple that was like, nope, I'm not even going inside to put my bathing suit on. It was just <laughs> dumping the water right then and there. So, <laughs> Yeah, there's there's two pools, but one didn't really get used, the older one. The older one is actually um, fed directly from the water off the top of the lake. Hmm. Uh, there's oh, a wow. sluice yeah. system that, so the older pool is, is a little bit lower than the lake, and there's a sluice system that feeds water constantly down into the old pool. Um, but I think they were, I don't know, they, they kept emptying it and doing some, they had people in there doing some either maintenance or cleaning. They're cleaning it, um, yeah. But the uh, the newer pool, the one Laura was saying that, that did get used as a little more of, you know, kind of like a, a modern pool you'd see at like a motor hotel. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that, that, you can kind of picture that's more like what that was. But yeah, the accommodations, I mean, I guess you could argue a little bit rustic, but. It um, was comfortable you weren't laying on the ground so <laughs> you're just going to sleep exactly <laughs> no, they're really nice they're great little rooms you just have to be prepared there's no air conditioning right so right. Yep. Um, you, you understand that when you're going in they basically provide you something comfortable to sleep on with um and clean uh, with a uh i don't want to say a quilt or a blanket you know um stuff and a towel I mean, they don't provide your shampoo and soap. And so you got to make sure you have that kind of stuff, but they, you have at least got a towel um, mm -hmm. and they do um, provide you with, you know, your fresh towels the next day as well. So, yeah. Nice. Um, anything, ex I was going to say, anything exotic on the menu? The food was, was awesome. Um, so what we understood is because there was, we weren't the only people um, staying in the park at that time. There was some, um, there was a small group of bird watchers who were visiting the park at the same time we were, and uh, a much larger group of university students um, uh, studying um, 
I uh, shoot. Something. Sorry. Insects, uh, bugs. I insects. I'm trying to remember the <laughs> the proper name for that. Etymology or something. Etymology. Yeah. Etymology. Yes. Yeah. Entomology. 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 Etymology is words. Entomology is bugs. Insectology. Uh, insectology. Exactly. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, which was kind of fun as well because many of them spoke English as well as Portuguese. And um, we could show them pictures that we had taken during the day. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's one of these or that's one of those. And so it was kind of fun. Bugology. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that covers it. Um, um, Yes, what is the etymology of entomology? Who knows? Um, but lots of fun uh, from that. But uh, I guess my point being, there's a lot of people um, using the dormitories or cabins or whatever you want to call them in, in the park. And um, because of that, uh, that all of us were going to be there, there was a family that lives on a farm just outside of the park who, uh, when large groups are in, are hired to come in and do the catering. Uh, mm. And I, I'm air quoting catering because basically it was um, mom organizing the family to do the cooking for all the guests. And it was like Brazilian home cooking. Awesome. Just at the, uh, that scale um, every night for, yeah. you know, the, what I guess maybe total of us, 60, 70 people. Wow. Um, yeah. And and of course, mom does that. Mom would do that anyway. Right. right? <laughs> and, oh my goodness. The food was so good. Oh, I yeah. loved it. My favorite was the dessert um, that I still don't know the actual name. I'm going to have to ask what it was called. Um, but uh, it was kind of, um, it was a very sweet, uh, it was like a big bowl of this kind of like a, a mashed, um, type thing it's hard to explain but oh yeah, like, I, I can picture it now it's yeah. it's interesting because when you look at it you kind of go what is that <laughs> <laughs> because i don't want to it it didn't look appetizing but i thought it but you know it's always the you don't know until you you try it you got to mm -hmm. try it at least mm -hmm. exactly and um Maybe not everybody liked it, but we liked it. Um, and then, of course, the surprise afterwards was trying to guess what it was. And I, I and would lean found... towards plantains, if you know. You... No, that's what well, I thought. Yeah. That was I was yeah. thinking like plantains and brown sugar is like mm -hmm. mushed up together, and that's what this is like. I, that was my thought, Chris. And uh, um, Francis came around um one of the evenings and he was sitting down with us and he was like okay guess what this is <laughs> <laughs> I, oh okay what are you gonna say <laughs> well i think you had guessed banana at first like sometimes when bananas are really uh, ripe they get that sweet mm -hmm. uh flavor but apparently it was pumpkin Jay normally does not like pumpkin, so that's why <laughs> I found it particularly funny. But um, I, I, can I enjoyed see pumpkin it. Pumpkin spice lattes in his future now. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, you take me back to Brazil, I will have that for dessert every night. It was delicious. <laughs> it was good. Pumpkin, huh? I wouldn't think hmm. pumpkin down in and the. And it didn't look like pumpkin. Here. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was really interesting. And and so then there was a lot or of it could be um, a different looking gourd. Yeah. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of pork and beef, uh, rice, um salads with like fresh veggies and yeah, just we the the food was so good. We were treated it was, so well. It was very good. So you would recommend this? I would yeah. highly recommend this, but I think and, and Laura made a comment earlier of like, I don't know if you need a guide or not. Um, but I would really recommend getting a guide and, you know, Francis, this is what he does. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he organizes groups and takes groups into the park. Um, and he does it in the stages. So he was also our guide at Iguazu. So okay. he was with us for Iguazu. And now, then, granted, oh, I don't know what other guides I, I don't know if there's a, like the other fellow who was there, um, 
if he's like lives in that area close by. Francis actually does live in Iguazu. Yeah. And oh, okay. so he was flying out with us as well. So if you're thinking about going down by yourself, well, it might be a little expensive if you're yeah. flying a guide Careful. out from there. So yeah. um, that's why I say I'm not totally sure how that part works, but um, but as a large group, you know, it, it didn't hurt to have. have well, that, and so. then kudos to Land Sharks for doing all that organizing to have right. Francis with us for that whole extent mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, that was part of the package of, of of what we were all paying in for um to go on the tour but uh yeah francis was uh, an amazing guide um just uh a, a wonderful individual but uh just you know really knew what he was doing the whole time just made it so easy for us i have spoke with other geocachers who've gone down to brazil to find the ape cache and either they've hired a guide or had a previous or a local geocacher to help them. Yeah. So oh, okay. it's something they suggest, you know, highly to have somebody there to help you find this because it's not, it's not like finding a geocache in the U S or Canada, right? In North America where the trails are clearly marked. Um, yeah, this this can be a little different. It's and not and under you're, you're in rural Brazil, six hours out from Sao Paulo, like if yeah. you're not Portuguese speaking, you may have some challenges there too. Exactly. And to know, you know, wildlife and plants and such yeah. that, you know, yeah, don't touch that one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't eat those berries. Connecting with locals is always so, so exactly. valuable. And, and it doesn't matter if you're going to Texas or New England, you know, having somebody who knows the local area is uh makes the adventure so much better yeah so, sure. and like you said the food the culture the place mm -hmm. i i like when i travel to find churches i mean did you did you get anywhere to find to go to church on sunday uh we that was not on the agenda for us okay um we we it was it was a bit of a go 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 adventure uh -huh. i think we sort of mentioned that the uh, two episodes ago when we were on about the first part of it so there there wasn't a ton of let's call it downtime or time for for things outside of kind of what was scheduled and planned so um you know it wasn't like a complete flat out panic the whole time but sure it was definitely um it was definitely a geocaching trip mm -hmm. um, and it was definitely a travel adventure getting to see some amazing places um, but no, we did not get an opportunity to go to any local churches. There, there was. Um, we found a uh, chapel. There, I found a chapel oh, that nice. is in Intervallis Park. So if you're caching, you'll come across that. And so I think Jay's got pictures of that too. Um, that was cool. It was really neat because, and it's one of the stops on the geo tour. So if oh, you're doing you it, go. so you're going to find it. Yeah. You will find yeah. it. But nice. what was quite curious about it is that it was like this really old it looked like like a turn of the century barn is mm. what it looked like right so you can kind of picture like the old faded wood and everything right you can kind of picture that but you you walk up and you kind of look through the and the wind there's no glass in the windows they're just open you look through into and there's pews all set up um but like just like old wooden benches for mm -hmm. pews set up but then at the 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 front um, they had like the Eucharist all set up and everything. It was like, they're ready to do the service. Very cool. it, was, it was like with a white linen cloth on top and everything. I was like, wow, this is actually a used chapel. Nice. It was quite fascinating. Good question though. I have not been asked that question before. Jim. <laughs> uh, if nothing else, I am unique. <laughs> <laughs> Never been an argument to that. There is of that there is no doubt. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming back and telling us the rest of your adventure. Uh, we'll expect Mrs. Land Monkey in, in the next two weeks. That's right. <laughs> now that we've got her on the schedule, we have established a pattern. Yes. Uh, Does that mean I get every two weeks off? Sure. Okay. As long as, <laughs> as, long as Mrs. Land Monkey's here. <laughs> And, and a podcaster to be named later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On waivers. Yeah. We're trading so, up. Exactly. 
So folks, yeah. thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Cashing in the Northwest in the Northwest. In the Northwest. I don't, I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> Everywhere. Yes, we want to take a moment, uh, as we always do at the end of the show, to thank our uh, our sponsors, Land Sharks, L A N D S H A R K Z dot C A, and Gold Country Geotourism. Uh, Landsharks.ca is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. Remember, they're shipping those online orders daily and any hour of the day you can go find that award-winning geocache. And for absolutely amazing geocaching adventures, check out exploregoldcountry.com. And don't forget to download the app and plan your geocaching adventures in gold country. We want to thank all of our faithful Denali level support, uh, supporters and sponsors that would include uh, Land Sharks and Gold Country Geotourism, but also uh, Groovy Owl, Cool Cow Cachers, and Cashly, the geocaching app. If you want to know more about supporting this year' podcast, please remember to go check. Oh, I was just about to said it backwards, but uh, click on the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. Like active in the chat, just Carlo. And like Butterfly Girl. And like J Carr. And like Boomer365. And Teus. Say gay hove. Ari, five, four, three, two, one. Peach of Washington. Team Noltex. Geo Birder. Me Pendragon. Kitty Quest. Ackerdoc. The Camp Clan. Why no Seattle? CRS 98, also active tonight. Yeah. Gia Caches. You, Dak. Wet Coaster. And Green Words. Drexer. Nervous Energies. Uh, Geo like a horse. I've got to oh, come yeah. up with a different one for that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Geo Nav Pro. Kev Mac D. Sorry about that, Wits End. Gas Station Tuna. <laughs> Dora Moore. Genies. Logwork. You Talks to Rocks. MC Three Cats. Flagman. Mountain Bike. Our favorite kitchen appliance, the LG 9000. Skyhawker. M Nerf. Kid Vegas 19. GSM Times 2. Ooh, sending in a glow tonight, just finding our way. Al Robrick. The Underground Subway Mark. Kors Gott. Railroad. BC Rock Crawler. The Seebeck Tribe. Ah, uh, someone from one of my favorite places in the Northwest, Whidbey Island Gal. And of course, Limax. Thanks, folks, for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. So if you like the show, please click the Patreon link on the Cashing in W website now if you like the vibe please subscribe and if you didn't like what you hear let us know about that too but you got to subscribe if you want to find out if we ever talk about what you ask us to so if you were in a restaurant you would tip if you were in a live audience you would clap but since you're on a podcast leave us a free fast fabulous fantastic five-star review and of course you can call into 253-693-TFTC and ask us a question or you know Send us to the Ape Cash any time of the day or night. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and chat. This show is produced by Chris Umfenauer, Jim Paulwitz, Jay Kennedy, Brian Lang, and Mrs. Land Monkey. This show's under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license, copyright 2024 by Chris Umfenauer. And folks, I ask you to stay tuned for the after show. The after show. <laughs> I didn't think of a witty thing to insert there until later. And I should, should have said, send Land Monkey a pumpkin. Oh, yeah. yeah. Time, day or yeah. night. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> that was nervous energies. Yeah, trying to be nervous, but I come out sounding like a horse. And it's just uh, it's not, not what I'm going for. I, I'll come up with it. Just give me some time. Mr. Bottle Ed. of glue is a bottle of glue, and no one can talk to a bottle of glue unless that glue is you know who, the famous Mr. Ed. <laughs> well, it was Mr. Ed. Ouch. Oh, too funny. Uh, we had some after show stuff. What do we got? 
Cliff wants to know snakes or bugs, which was worse. Um, didn't really see many oh. snakes. You saw one snake. We right? saw one snake, and it wasn't big. But I wouldn't say it was really small, but I think we got one picture of it. it <laughs> and they looked at it and went, yeah, it's not dangerous. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> well, okay. And, and honestly, the bugs weren't that bad. Like, you know, we were yeah. warned before we even left on the trip. It was like, oh, mosquitoes, mosquitoes. So we brought like our mosquito head nets. Mm -hmm. uh, we had lots of mosquito repellent and everything. Really didn't need anything. I, I found that was better. I, I think I got bit more when we were in Buenos Aires mm. and, and the worst mm. in Uruguay. Yeah. And the rest of the trip wasn't that bad at all. Intervallus was fine. And 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 the bugs in Intervallus, there was there was such a diversity of them, but it wasn't like they weren't bad. It was they they weren't swarming you. No, mm. no, but no. there's like so many different types of butterflies. I've I have like SD cards full of butterfly photos. <laughs> uh um and we saw praying mantis and beetles and all like that, like I said, having the entomology students there was fun because we would just like go, be going through the cameras with them. Like, oh yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So great question. Um, yeah. We've got some heard. great fatas tonight. And before we get into the fa fatas, let's hit uh, Doramores here. The souvenirs for 2001, 2002. I'm sorry, 2021, 2022, and 2023 all have big blue switch day on them. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. See, it's it's shrinkflation. Now <laughs> it's just blue switch day. They're busted. Yeah. I thought last year was just blue switch day, but there they were still big. It was because there was this whole discussion we had yeah. with Rock Chalk about that. What a bunch of liars. I know. <laughs> um Wet Coaster says, so switch day, four days to get the souvenir. Earth Cash weekend, two days to get the souvenir. Math is hard in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Touche. Nice one, Wet Coaster. Uh... Um, okay. We're, we're jumping around a little bit. It's okay. Um, Ooh. From CRS 98, the missus and I were able to visit Carl's Bad Caverns today. It was absolutely incredible. One single giant cave over a mile long and a hundred yards wide for the most of it. That's amazing. Is, is he out of Carl's good cavern? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's been on the bucket list for a while. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to getting there one day. That's that's amazing. Sounds great, CRS 98. Thanks for sharing that. You, you can't do a lot of geocaching down there. <laughs> Not in the cavern, I guess. Well, oh, I'm sure there's an earth cache. Oh, I'm sure. What? Why would you say that? <laughs> How do you know? Oh, uh, what else have we got? Okay. Um, here's one by GSM Times Two. Very timely. Registration and the chance to purchase swag packages for Geo Woodstock Twenty ends when the packages sell out or April 15th, whichever comes first. Oh, it's going to work. Geowoodstock.com slash shop. Just a couple of days left. So yeah, get yeah. on it. If it's uh, if it's a priority. Yeah, for you. Exactly. Support. Are you guys going? We're going. Yeah. Um, yes. we're, we're all booked up. I guess that's the next thing I have to start working on is figuring <laughs> out what we're going to do when we get there. Right. Uh, I'm still just like, okay, I guess I better start planning that one now. It was, we it was like we'll we'll buy the the flights and we worked with our friends and got the accommodations and we got our rental car. It was like okay, the essentials are dealt with. I I'll deal with everything else when we get back from, from this, this yep, trip. Exactly. We've been back for a few weeks now, so it's like all right, I guess I better get on this. I I was uh, that's our anniversary weekend, oh. right? So I always feel guilty going to Geo Woodstock. It's like, I, uh, I can't even ask. I'm not even going to ask, right? It's our anniversary. And my wife says, oh, we'd love to go to Arizona. Nice. Oh, <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> then. There you go. Um, I was shocked that I, I went and looked and was pricing flights, you know, from Phoenix and um, Las Vegas and other. I looked at Costco. They had, they got me right into Flagstaff 
for with a hotel and a rental car for less than I could fly into Phoenix. Like traveling via. So sorry, yeah, going from Costco to Costco, right? No, yeah, no. yeah. No, Costco travel. I you know those pneumatic tubes like the banks? They just. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Just make sure you make that right turn at Albuquerque. Yeah. Oh, I love the visual of that. <laughs> as long as it doesn't end like uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's, that's right. <laughs> Tuck your shirt in. It's going to be important. <laughs> um, too funny. Too funny. Um, what else have we got here? Okay. Oh, pull up. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do this one. Uh, so, and nervous energies. It's just nervous energy. Come on, Chris. I don't, I don't know how to be nervous. <laughs> I got to rattle my teeth or something. Trip to North Vancouver ended up with a few DNFs, but found the infamous Ex Libris cache that had and had amazing time surrounded by floors of books. That's a fantastic library cache. Um, I had a YouTube video of it years ago. If you want to watch a great YouTube video for it, check out Just Carlo. Mm -hmm. um, his YouTube channel. He's got a fantastic video for Ex Libris. Um, but yeah, that is a that is a great destination cache up here. Um, our public, our, it's in our main public library in Vancouver, which is a very impressive building to start with. So, um, and, and, a, and a well done cache. So very good. I'm glad he enjoyed the trip. Hey, and speaking of nervous energies, um, I have been enjoying uh tony's coffee every morning lately so um shout out to tony's coffee um why is it i don't know why it's infamous maybe famous is a better word it's infamous it's beyond famous more than famous <laughs> it's like it's like inception it's like famous inside of famous that's Ooh. right i didn't know it was famous i recognized the name but <laughs> it, it's loaded up with faves so. oh okay um, and i think it's in a geocache of the week if not should be at some should point be. yeah okay i'm i'm avoiding one because i think we're gonna talk more about it but let's let's come back uh okay. komakino yeah. says tomorrow's episode of caching with komakino or geocaching with komakino and the kid will feature a ballard troll and mr and mrs land monkey that says comic neo Comic the Comic <laughs> Ouch. Uh, he, does, he does comics. He's a comic he neo. Yeah. And they're new <laughs> comics. They've never been done before. So it's yeah. a comic neo. Yeah. yeah. It was a it's good visit bad. with him. It was a fun visit with him. It's too bad the kid didn't come along, but that's all right. We still had a, a hoot uh with Comikino. A hoot and a half. A hoot and a half, indeed. That was a lot of fun. Uh, did you guys do anything for the eclipse? You know, unlike Starcasher, <laughs> who happened to be in the path of the eclipse. This is on Monday. Even though my home was in the path of the totality for two minutes, I drove 80 miles away to Norwalk, Ohio. And I know where that is. Huh? To get almost four minutes of totality. It's drove 80 miles for two more minutes. Really? Okay. Awesome. This, is, this is what this is. I would have done that. I would have too, totally. I uh, also found 23 geocaches and DNF'd five before and or after. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently he found 23 geocaches in that four minutes of totality. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, hey, start cacher. Congrats on that. I hope you had an amazing eclipse experience. It sounds like a, a great day. Um, hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the ex eclipse experience in the Pacific Northwest was... Um, uh, it's like, oh, is it eclipse all day? Because this is just like <laughs> <laughs> heavy it, overcast, raining. Yeah. I don't it, know. It, it was overcast. It didn't even look any darker overcast. <laughs> than, so, so I was like, Pleh. it was it yeah. was nice and sunny here. And I got the binoculars out. And no, I did not stare at the sun <laughs> through the binoculars. <laughs> but if you hold up binoculars or a telescope or something, you can make an, we're over here. You can make look, an ocular projection <laughs> onto something else and right. see the image that way. That's cool. And that worked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah at least that's he sent stuff. a picture. I sent a picture, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, let's see if I have time to pull it up. Chat amongst yourselves. Okay. 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 Here we go. This is the one I was going to you know, avoid just because... Um, 
I think we're going to talk about it more. So I wanted to give us plenty it's of like time. an episode unto itself. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what what your, this what is a good it's, Go ahead. What? It's, well, I was just going to say, this is a good idea because we were, uh, the last couple of years, we were doing like um, uh, shows on destinations. And so then we'd bring a guest in and we would talk about visiting and cashing in those different mm -hmm. destinations. We haven't done the Gulf Islands. Um, and we haven't done the San Juan Islands. So you're right. Um, those would be two great places to talk about. Um, Pender, uh, North and South Pender Island is in the Gulf Islands. It's, it's all sort of geologically part of the same island chain, but there's a, a Canadian American border that goes through the border the that Gulf. separates these. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, on the north side, we call them the Gulf Islands, and uh, North and South Pender Island are in there um beautiful i mean the san juans and the gulf islands beautiful places to visit um laura uh think back to our trips to pender any any must find caches you can think of oh it's it's been a while um i know that there's an earth cache <laughs> what <laughs> up, in, up in the viewpoint if you want to do I'm getting my islands mixed up though no you have your earth cache Oh, island time is on south yeah Pender. yours yeah. that's right i was sorry i was i was getting my islands mixed up i was thinking about the trail we did that had all like those uh fruit and vegetable caches and then when you hiked up to the top there was a really nice view that's on um uh salt spring that was salt spring okay right. where so, where are the 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 trail was had like a letter for each that's what that's you think one. yes it was on salt, salt spring. spring okay so but for for pender i think there's just a lot of if i recall then now i'm thinking about the correct island um a lot of just really nice like park at the side of the road and there's a trail down to the beach and but but cash. just so you know they're not short trails no they're not so if you think that you're going to park at the side and zip down like a park and grab no, you're going to be doing um, a hike down to the beach or down to, well, anyways, and and it probably isn't a short trail. So it's it's going to be a little bit longer than maybe what you think. Yeah. Um, that's what I remember. Uh, some are definitely longer than others. They may look short on the map, but <laughs> some of them are not. <laughs> yeah, good advice. Um, and oh, but if there is one, I believe there is a library cache. So make sure you do it on Saturday when you get there because it will be closed on Sunday. I ha we didn't get it, but I, I think uh, by the time we realized that uh, and gathered the clues or something, the library was already closed, and we haven't been back to the island since. But next time and hopefully the disc golf one is there although that one you have to walk so if you don't have time don't walk around the whole disc golf it's because multi right the disc i one. think so yeah 18 holes worth of multi yeah just about. <laughs> um yeah. yeah and uh in in the chat kitty quest uh was saying yeah that's <laughs> my my earth cache uh, at brooks point um I was just getting my islands mixed up, so I forgot that that's where you were talking about, Laura. <laughs> but Brooks Point, I mean, not like, oh, you got to go do my earth cache. But, no, no, no. Um, but Brooks Point is a beautiful park. It's definitely worth the visit and the walk around. They're going next Thursday, returning on Monday. So you should nice. be able to do the library. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Cool. Nice. Now, if you're a geocacher on North or South Pender Island or in the San Juans, send an email to cash to feedback at cashingnw.com. We want to talk to you and get you on the show because that's one area you're right. We have not talked about. There you go. Great suggestion. Yeah. We'd love to do that. There's the, uh, Oh, there's your photo. Yeah. So that was as much as we got here for the peak was 26%. Um, earlier you can see it was transiting. It wasn't quite as much. Mm -hmm. And then it came over and, that's as, much, that's as much as I saw, but it was at least sunny. Yeah. 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 Better than what we got. Yep. <laughs> All right. Oh, and uh, Kitty Quest says the disc golf course also has a night cache that can be done during the day 
as well as an adventure lab. I don't think the adventure lab was there, but I no. think we might have done the night cache. That sounds familiar. I, it's been a long time since we've it was. Been it was been a while since we've been there. there. So yeah. But beautiful place to go. I hope you guys have a wonderful trip. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Well, with that, we covered nearly a whole nother episode of Cashman <laughs> in the Northwest. But again, if you're from the islands, reach out to us. And until then, I want you to get out and get caching in the Northwest. <laughs>